Chicago World's Fair was introduced as a World's Fair held in Chicago in 1893. That was to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus' arrival to the New World in 1492. The preparations made for holding the great commemorative exhibition took so long and were so big that the exhibition was delayed until the summer of 1893. Chicago had won the prize of having the World's Fair in Chicago of July 2, 1892. They had selected the site of Jackson Park in Midway Plaisance for the grand event which had covered nearly 700 acres of beautiful parks and grounds providing exhibitions, food, music, and entertainment. The Chicago World's Fair opened up on May 1, 1893 and didn't close until October 31, 1893. Attendance figures varies, but it generally agreed that a total of 27.5 million people visited the fair. 21.5 million that paid admission and 6 million were free. They are unsure of the total numbers of American visitors to the fair and they are not sure of any of the percentage or people that came more than once. However, it can be assumed that roughly 25% of the United States went to the fair. Congress had awarded Chicago the opportunity to host the fair over the other cities that they were thinking of. The other city candidates were New York, Washington, D.C., and St. Louis, Missouri. The site of the exposition gained the name White City due to the appearance of the massive white buildings that were built. The White City showcases Chief Architect Daniel Burnham's idea for a city beautiful movement. My name is Rose Macbeth. I'm here at the Chicago World's Fair and I will be interviewing Ida Wells along with Frederick Douglass. We will be discussing why Ida and Frederick did not recommend that the colored Americans attend the fair. I'm going to ask them a few questions as to why they did not recommend them to attend the fair, along with some personal questions about how they themselves felt about the problems that were occurring during this time. We are now sitting down with Miss Ida Wells. Ida, could you tell us about yourself? I was born and slave in Holly Springs, Mississippi on July 16, 1862. Living in Mississippi as an African American was hard. I faced many racial prejudices and were restricted by discrimination rules and practices. Why didn't you support the World's Fair? I didn't support the World's Fair because there were moms of white men that were lynching African Americans in almost every state. Do you know how they were lynched? I do. There have been many different ways of how they were lynched, but this is one of the most common ways. The African American was the first hung. After they were hung, they were cut. I am unsure of where. After they were cut, they were shot. I also am sure, unsure of where. After all that, they were burned. Was this illegal? No, not at all. The white men, in fact, took pictures standing next to the African Americans while they were just got hung and they were hanging there all lifeless. Do you know how many were lynched in each state? I am aware of how many in each state. Alabama, 22. Arkansas, 25. California, 3. Florida, 11. Idaho, 8. Illinois, 1. Kansas, 3. Kentucky, 9. Louisiana, 29. Maryland, 1. Mississippi, 16. Missouri, 6. Montana, 4. New York, 1. North Carolina, 5. North Dakota 1, Ohio 3, South Carolina 5, Tennessee 28, Texas 15, Virginia 7, West Virginia 5, Wyoming 5, Arizona Territory 3, Oklahoma 2. Why were the African Americans afraid to go to the World's Fair? They could have been lynched if they have gone. The World's Fair was going on right when there was a lot of lynching going on so they could have been afraid that the white men were going to lynch them. Were the African Americans allowed a separate exhibit? No, the national directors were considering it, but they decided that there was going to be no separate exhibit for the African Americans. Why were they not granted exhibits? The exhibits of colored people would be so few numbered that when installing in their places, they would almost be unnoticed, and there would be no way of knowing if the if their products were of the world's first skill and industry that the race would lose the credit of their production. Also, the exhibits made by the colored people would not compare favorably with the exhibits made for the white people. Were the colored Americans let into all the buildings and exhibits? As far as I am aware of, yes, we were let into the, all the, the buildings and exhibits.
Thank you. Frederick, can you tell me your age? I don't know my age. Why is that? I have never seen any record of my age. I am not the only one either. The majority of these slaves have no knowledge of their age. I have heard my master say that I came to him sometime during 1835. I was about 17 years old then. Do you know anything about your birth family? In fact, I do know a little bit. My mother's name was Harriet Bailey. She was the daughter of Isaac and Betsy Bailey, both of which are colored and quite dark. My father was a white man. The opinion was also whispered that my master was my father. But of the correctness of this opinion, I know nothing. This means of knowing this was withheld from me. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood or whatever you can remember? My mother and I were separated when I was but an infant, before I knew her as my mother. It was a very common custom in part of Maryland from which I ran away to part children from their mothers at a very young, early age. Frequently before the child has reached its 12th month, its mother is taken away from it. The child is under the care of an old woman, too old for field labor. I never saw my mother, but four or five more times in my life, which these times were short in duration and at night. Did you attend the fair? I actually gave a speech at the Chicago World's Fair before the crowds to open the Haitian Pavilion at the World's Columbian Expedition in Chicago. Haiti's evolution from a slave colony to free and independent republic and its relevance to African Americans, I encouraged the U.S. to improve its relationship with Haiti because the country had great potential for growth and it was rich in natural beauty and resources. I also said we should not forget that the freedom you and I enjoy today I said it's largely due to the brave stand taken by the black sons of Haiti 90 years ago. Striking for their freedom, they struck for the freedom of every black man in the world. Thank you. I would like to thank Ida Wells and Frederick Douglass for letting me interview them today at the Chicago World's Fair.